Hello and welcome to this video, which will be a comparison between two Tanberg tape recorders, namely the Model 12, or Series 12, uh, which is shown here, which is a tape recorder that Tanberg launched in 1966, being their first transistorized model, and its successor, the Model 1200X. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that these are two identical machines, they are in fact not, and there are quite a few differences between them. Uh, but people tend to confuse them, partly because of the fact that they're both called 12-something. And the complete type number for this machine here on the right, the Model 12, is 1241. And the complete type number for this one is 1241X. So people generally figure, well, what's that X? That can't be a big difference. And in fact, in some respects it's not, in some respects it is. Uh, we'll try to go through the differences and similarities between these machines in this video. First of all, a Tanberg. The Tanberg joystick, a classic feature of the Tanberg machines. That's the same on both machines. They both have tape counters, they both have an on-off switch. Uh, another typical feature of a Tanberg machine is this record playback amplifier selector for selecting uh, which track you will listen to, which track you'll record on. These machines are stereo machines, so there are two, there's two of everything, two channels, two recording level indicators, left channel, right channel, two volume controls, right channels at the bottom, left channel on top, two microphone inputs, etc, etc. With the Model 12, there is one set of volume controls for uh, recording and playback. If we go over to the 1200X, there are two sets of volume controls. First, one in the same position as on the other, uh, as on the Model 12, but that is only the recording level volume control. The uh, playback volume is over here. And it's not a bad idea on a ma machine that's this relatively complex to have two volume controls, one for record and one for playback, especially if you want to monitor what you're recording. With uh, the Series 12, anything you record is heard in the internal loudspeakers or external loudspeakers if you put the speaker selector in the external position, but you can never turn the monitoring off completely. Um, one way to do that, though, is to have no speakers connected at all at the back, and that means that the external position actually functions as a monitoring off. With the 1200X, we can actually turn the output volume up and down even during recording. However, all is not well and good. It's very good that they have a separate volume control. However, looking at how it operates, it gets rather tight here between the, the head cover and, uh, and the volume control meaning that it's quite awkward to operate. Also, being a stereo volume control, of course it's in two sections, and keeping both sections aligned while at the same time maneuvering in this tight space is a bit awkward, so technically it's not really a very ergonomical solution. On the mono versions of this tape recorder, there is also an output level knob here, but it's, uh, it's mono, so it's easier to operate. You don't have to hold two parts together, and you can just twiddle the top half and the whole thing comes with it. If we go back to the uh, 12, uh, I mentioned that there was a speaker selector, and the speaker selector here is of course in the same position on the panel as the, speaker so as the uh, output volume control on the 1200X. The speaker selector on the 12 1200X is in a completely different location here at the back of the machine. And that's a classic location on, on older Tanbergs. Newer Tanbergs tend to, tended to have the speaker selector moved to the front of the panel. Another difference is that the speaker selector here has the three natural positions internal, internal plus external, and external. Whereas going over to the Model 12, the speaker selector has much more positions. It has an external, internal, and external, and internal positions, but it also has a channel 2 external, channel 2, channel 1 external, channel 2 internal, and channel 2 external, channel 1 internal position. Now these positions uh, serve two purposes. One is that you simply can use them to listen to one channel in the machine while have an external loudspeaker play back the other channel. 
but if you don't have anything connected to the external loudspeaker jacks, you can also use them as a playback track selector, which makes track selection very easy when playing back. We can demonstrate this by running a tape, listening to it. Track one. Track two. With uh, the 12, another option to select tracks is to use the record playback amplifier switch. Um, when we put the machine on, if we put the uh, switch for the channel we don't want to listen to into the amplifier position, both speakers will play the sound from uh, this channel here in this case. Or we can flip it around and uh, listen to the right hand channel using the left hand channel as well on both loudspeakers. Um, now that's a bit of a cumbersome operation. Uh, it's definitely possible and I'll get back to why it's not a too good a solution. And of course the 1200X has the same uh, assortment of, of buttons here, uh, but it has the same, but it, and, and of course it, but it doesn't have the external loudspeaker selector in this position or at the back, so the only option for switching tracks here is using this button. Uh, which makes for slightly clumsy operation if you're listening to mono tapes that are recorded on alternately on the left and right hand tracks, or if you simply want to listen to four track mono. Um, looking uh, again at the Model 12, in this region here we have a couple of vacuum tubes that function as the recording level indicators. And this is rather old-fashioned when the machine was designed in 1966, or launched in 66, I should say. But it does have the advantage that uh, these meters, these indicators, were relatively cheap, being tube technology in its day, which was relatively cheap, much cheaper than transistors, and they work very well as fast-acting peak-level meters, which is what you want in a domestic recorder. Going over to the 1200X, the uh, Tanberg had fallen for the marketing pressure and actually put in two sets of ordinary mechanical meters here. While we're in this uh, region, there's a slight detail that you wouldn't normally notice. The uh, treble and bass controls on the slightly more modern 1200X are quite standard. There's a treble control that can control the uh, treble from minus 12 to plus 12 decibels with a natural neutral position in the middle, and the same goes for the bass. Moving over to the Model 12, it's a slightly more uh, old-fashioned arrangement. The treble control, when in the neutral position, is far left, so zero, and turning it up decreases the treble. Whereas the bass control, when in the far left, is normally off, is neutral, but advancing it increases the bass. Thus the bass control really for, works as a type of loudness control with the treble control using, being used to eliminate hiss. Uh, if they're listening to a noisy track. Um, a final thing here, the uh, Model 1200X has an input selector here. You can select line, the line input, the uh, pickup input from a record player, or you can mix them together, uh, in which case the top knob will get the microphone signal and the bottom knob will get the recording, uh, the, the line, uh, sorry, the um, signal from the external or from a record player um, and uh, but normally you'd normally you'd only record on one input at once uh, from one input at once and then you can choose that with this selector here whereas with the series 12 they don't have a selector like that at all indeed there's no such selector on the whole panel all inputs are always live which is great in one way because you don't have a selector that you can mess up on the other hand the main problem with that solution is that all inputs are always live, so you tend to record noise from one input while recording from another. But the real big difference underneath these machines, in these machines, is underneath these tape covers. In the Model 12 we have a standard two-head arrangement with a, an erase head and a record playback head. Typical of domestic machines of that era. Whereas going over to the Model 1200X, we have a third head here, which is the Tanberg a uh, cross-field biasing system where thereby the recording bias is supplied to the recording head, not electrically mixed in the head, but from a separate head opposite the recording head. This claim was claimed to give a better frequency response and better signal-to-noise ratio so that lower tape speeds could be used. 
Um, Tanberg kept this for quite a few years and then dropped it at the end of the 70s. So there we have it. There are a few differences between the Tanberg Model 1200X, launched in 68, and the Tanberg Model 12, launched just two years earlier in 1966. Okay, thank you for watching, and bye-bye.